Hello? No. No, that can't be true. Not Valve. No, not Gaben. I don't believe you. This is bad. This is really bad. I can't believe it. We've got a really big problem. Valve lied to you about the Steam Deck, but does it actually matter? So it was found out in recent weeks that Valve has actually changed some of the specifications on the Steam Decks that they're shipping out. And it is not all Steam Decks that they're selling to customers, but they are indeed delivering worse Steam Decks to certain people that order them. Now, the primary culprit of what Valve is changing is the SSD that's in the 256 gig and 512 gig models of the Steam Deck. They are shipping it with an SSD that is capable of having half the rated speed that they initially told us the SSD in the Steam Deck was going to be like. Now I have my own Steam Deck that I purchased off of eBay months ago, and then I have my Steam Deck that I actually got delivered just a couple weeks ago, and I was waiting until this got delivered to find out, did I get the cut down SSD, or did I get the proper SSD that I actually thought I was gonna get when I ordered my Steam Deck all the way back in July of 2021. So as it turns out, the Steam Deck that I got was the proper specifications of the order that I placed and what Valve told me the device would be back in 2021. So no issues with me. Instead, I went out and I purchased the SSD that Valve is including in these cut down Steam Decks in order to test is Valve actually telling the truth when they say it doesn't matter what's in it because that has been Valve's explanation. You don't need to worry that we gave you PCI Express 3.0 by 2 SSD instead of the PCI Express Express 3.0 by 4 SSD. The SSD that they are sometimes shipping out is capable of half the speeds of what is actually expected when people purchase their Steam Deck. Valve saying that unless it's an outlier case, it won't actually make an impact in games, so you don't need to worry about it. So I've tested a whole slew of different options of what you can play games on with the Steam Deck to find out does it actually matter whether or not Valve includes this SSD or the one that they actually told you they were going to give you. Today Today's video is sponsored by Best Buy with an SSD that's sure not to disappoint because we've got the WD Black SN850 NVMe drive, which is the first officially PlayStation licensed SSD for the PS5. Back when this console launched, there were actually no SSDs that could go in that slot because they were not fast enough to match the internal storage speeds of the PlayStation 5. But now we're here with Sony giving their seal of approval to the WD Black SN850. It's got read speeds up to 7,000 megabytes per second. It's got write speeds up to 5,300 megabytes per second. And all that means you can store and play PS5 games directly from this drive. And with capacities up to two terabytes, you don't have to worry about the internal console limitations of 825 gigs. It's also got the all-in-one heatsink design so that you don't have to worry about fitting another heatsink in here. And you can store and play more titles on a drive that's officially tested and certified for your PS5 so you can keep gaming without worrying and about compatibility issues. And the best part is it's available at Best Buy with in-store pickup and fast delivery options. Western Digital has long been at the forefront of gaming innovations and this WD Black SN850 for the PlayStation 5 is no different. If you don't want to be disappointed by your SSDs, this is the one to pick up. Again, big thanks to Best Buy for sponsoring today's video. You can check all of this out at the link in the video description. Pick up an SN850 from your local Best Buy or have it delivered to you. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. So I've tested five different games across a whole host of devices. We have the 512 gig version of the Steam Deck that Valve sent me recently. I also have a one terabyte SSD that I've been including in my first Steam Deck that I've got. We have the 64 gig eMMC chip that actually is included on the lowest end Steam Deck, but since it couldn't hold a single one of the games that we benchmarked during this, we actually used a 256 gigabyte micro SD card, which is a preferred method for a lot of Steam Deck owners. Owners. And then lastly, to round it out, it is a 256 gigabyte PCI Express 3.0 by 2 drive, the one that is half the speed of what Valve is saying that they should have included in the original Steam Deck. So we have 
all of that there. The games that we tested in is mostly modern titles with one really long loading game thrown in, which was GTA 5. But otherwise, we've got Cyberpunk, Elden Ring, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, and God of War. And I've tested it in multiple different scenarios. I tested how long does it take for the game to load to the menu from clicking play, and then from the menu to get into a saved game. How long does that take to load? Because those should be stored on the actual storage device. And all of the numbers I'm gonna to quote to you in just a second are averages across three runs of doing this multiple times, just to make sure there's no outliers. This is all factual information. So in Cyberpunk, it made no difference whatsoever into getting it into the menu. And it also made no difference in getting into the save. The thing that took the longest to get into the save was the micro SD card, but the PCI Express 3.0 by two SSD, had no problems with it whatsoever. In Elden Ring, again, no difference. And again, for getting into the save, the micro SD took the longest, but otherwise it does seem to be like it's in within a margin of error. For Final Fantasy VII Remake, again, no difference. <laughs> But this time, the PCI Express 3.0 by 2 SSD did take the longest to get into the save, but it was only by about half a second, which is within the margin of error. God of War, again, no real differences here. The by 2 SSD was the longest, but also not that much of a difference. Getting into the save in God of War was again, the longest on the micro SD card. In GTA 5, by far the longest loading game that we could test that actually reasonably works on the Steam Deck and is modestly popular, again, saw no difference. The micro SD card was significantly slower than everything else, coming in at 68 seconds to get into the menu of the game, and then taking about 40 seconds to get into the save, no matter which storage medium you actually use. So, Valve's claims of it not affecting gaming performance seem to be substantiated. Valve did say in their article that they only updated after everybody figured this out and did not disclose to people up front that unless it's an outlier, this really isn't gonna matter. But because one of the things that Valve did when they were promoting the Steam Deck was to refer to this thing as a PC and that it can do everything that a PC can do. And that's best exemplified by when you're able to actually switch it over to desktop mode in Linux so that you can use this as a proper Linux operating system device. So it does have the ability to do regular desktop things. And that is where this SSD issue is going to come into play because the PCI Express 3.0 by 2 SSD has half the lanes. It's half the speed of the SSD that Valve quoted to you when you preserved your Steam Deck. Preserved? Pre-reserved. Nailed it. So my one terabyte SSD that I have on my Steam Deck is capable of doing about two gigabytes per second sequential read speeds and 1.7 gigabytes per second sequential write speeds. The random read speeds is about 1.1 gigabytes per second and the random read speeds is about 800 gigabytes per second. On the 64 gigabyte by EMMC, which is the lowest chip that comes with the Steam Deck, the numbers are really bad. It's only 184 megabytes per second sequential read and 19.92 on random reads. Absolutely awful numbers, but doesn't make a difference when it comes to gaming. Where that's going to show up is when you're doing things in a desktop environment, if you're trying to transfer files, or when you're trying to use this as a device where you're managing data on a regular basis, if you're using it for for actual productivity tests as a regular computer, that is where this is going to show up the biggest. If you try to use the micro SD card, it is absolutely atrocious. 140 megabytes per second sequential read and only 10 megabytes per second in a random read. So it is very terrible at accessing data in a non-sequential pattern in case you're trying to access multiple files. Now, the new SSD that Valve's gonna be including is by far worse than the ones that they said that they were going to give you. It is half the speed in sequential reads, and it's half the speed in random reads as well as random writes. So accessing data on this drive outside of the confinement of video games on SteamOS is going to be a bottleneck, which is something that Valve did not disclose to the people who were buying their console. Which brings me back to the question that I asked at the beginning. Does it matter? Is this actually a problem? Well, yes and no. This is not a problem if all you care about is loading into your games and 
being able to play them seamlessly. The new SSD has no issues getting the same speeds and loading times as the previous iteration. So from the standpoint of it being a console and being a lockdown experience that's only meant for games, it's a-okay. But if you view this from the lens of this being a PC, a Valve selling you a computer, specifications actually really matter. What the manufacturer tells you you're getting in a device does matter. Consoles change this stuff all the time. The PlayStation will swap out the fan. They might change some different stuff that they will never tell you about, and you just have to find out later on down the line. But it does seem like computer enthusiasts have a different expectation of the computer manufacturers and the products that they're selling to them. So including an SSD that is half the speed of the one you thought you were going to get when you initially put a deposit on the device is actually a little shady. And the biggest problem that seems to come from this is not the fact that Valve did this because there seems to be a shortage going on of the SSDs that they need to put into the Steam Deck. That is totally fine. The biggest issue comes in where they're not disclosing this to the people who are getting their devices. As far as I have seen, Valve is not sending out emails saying, hey, there's a shortage. You might actually end up getting something a little bit slower, but don't worry. It's on the end user to know that Valve already did this and then go to their website where they backdated the information on May 28th and changed it to say, hey, we're updating our SSDs and that's how you know. Valve is not reporting this to the end consumer. They're actually relying on the end consumer to find out about it in a different way, which is partially the PSA of this video. Valve has changed the Steam Deck and you have to find out whether or not they did it to you. If you are planning on using this as a computer, as a PC, well then you actually will have a worse device. Or if you're planning on taking out the SSD that's in the Steam Deck and replacing it with something else, but then using the SSD that came in the Steam Deck, well now you have a worse piece of hardware for that, but Valve is not letting you know whether or not you're getting it. This is all normal in the world of different manufacturers and depending on which area you're looking at, it's not a problem. Car manufacturers change things out all the time. Console manufacturers change things out all the time. But I do think when it comes to PCs, when people actually make a purchase, they do it based on the specifications they are told they are going to get. And in this case, Valve did not disclose that properly. And even though I did get an SSD, that is the rated speed that Valve told me I was gonna get, I didn't know until the day it showed up at my doorstep. What I would like to see happen from here is Valve disclose this to the people who are getting their Steam Decks. They let the end user decide. If all you're needing it for is gaming, well then Valve should be able to let you know that you're getting the lower end SSD and you can say yes to receiving it. In case you want the higher end one, you should be able to say, I will wait until you have availability of the higher end SSDs. Letting the consumer choose in this instance is probably the proper way of going about it. Does it actually matter from a gaming console perspective? not in the slightest. Does this matter from an openness and transparency to your customer's standpoint? Absolutely, and I would like to see Valve do better. But the Steam Deck's still great and I love it. Hey, uh, what SSD do you have in there? I don't know, it doesn't really matter.